Okay, we are almost done getting this old beast running again. I have reinstalled the operating system, worked out any bugs, installed whatever applications, everything's all set, and I ended up with two or three, maybe even 400 megabytes more free space than I had before, so that's even better. But one interesting thing that I noticed, if I go to shut it down, so just your standard shutdown, but if you notice, the standby is grayed out. And watch what happens when you go to actually shut it off. I'll come back when we're ready to shut. For some reason this takes a long time to shut down, I'm not sure why, but it does. Look at that! Have you ever seen that with Windows XP? Yep. Yep, it'll do it. And it shuts the hard drive down, interestingly enough, but leaves the fans in the system running and it'll just sit there, kind of like back in the old days of Windows 95 and 98 with non-ACPI um, compliant machines and all kinds of good stuff. And the wattage reading goes down just a tiny little bit. So we're not doing any fucking SSDs in here to save fucking electricity. Because it's only using a few watts. Anyway, let me get this booted back up. And I'll show you where to change that. In case you have an old machine like this. So it'll shut down properly. If the machine supports it. This one does. I had forgotten that it actually did this originally when I first loaded the OS on this God knows when. Um, but it does, and uh, I was able to fix that, so I'll show you how. So I'm going to reboot it now. I hit the reset button so the drive stays powered down, but it's going to spin up now. Detected, and we're off. This machine is slow enough that you get that bar going across the bottom before the splash screen comes up. Kind of like Windows 2000 used to do. Well, holy crap, that went into the OS fast. Now we just got to wait for it to load everything else and come up with a mouse pointer at one point or another. There it is. Now it's going to come up. Go to Control Panel and Power Options. In the APM tab, it says your computer reports that it can support advanced power management. That's what I meant to say before APM. Uh, using APM, you can reduce power consumption of your system. If you have a battery power on your computer, APM also provides battery status information. For more information about it, see the crap that nobody reads on the Windows CD. Enable Advanced Power Management Support. Click. Click Apply. And it has applied, and now we'll just go to shut down again. I don't know if um, it's going to show, like, I don't know if it needs a reboot first. We'll find out now. It should show the sta uh, standby properly. Nope, maybe it needs a reboot before it'll do that. So we'll hit turn off and see what happens this time. Okay, this time it powered down. Monitor going to sleep, amber light, boot it back up, and we'll see if the standby option is there. The answer is, alas, no. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it had the standby option before I reloaded it, but it doesn't make a difference because I'm never going to use that option. 
when it turns off it does actually power the machine off and that's perfectly fine. Okay, now it is time to reinstall Winamp and this requires special setup. Another reason why a Raspberry Pi or another system that won't run Winamp won't do. Winamp has a particular feature and not to mention the keyboard is hard-coded to the X key which is play in Winamp although yes I understand that can be mapped. Uh, the only problem is I don't think I have a picture saved of how to do it so I have to go through the menu here and I'll see if I could find it. Either Winamp agent or Winamp detector plug-in I forget which one needs to be checked during the install and uh, then I'll just set this up. I don't want a quick launch or a desktop icon. And we'll let that install. Okay, that's been installed. I use the Winamp Modern skin. We'll click Next. Um, I think everything can be, for the most part, associated with Winamp. I, it's really fine. Playlist files, I'm not going to do the PLS because that's going to be for... Um, I don't know what you call it. VLC player, there we go. And video files, it doesn't need to own. Winamp specific, that's fine. Show Winamp in the folder context menus in Windows Explorer, fine. Enable Winamp agent, I... I don't think I need it, but I'm not positive. So we'll let that boot up for the first time. Okay, I forgot on this I actually used the Winamp Classic. So I changed that. It's on the uh, Llama Whippin' Intro by DJ Mike Llama. Uh, currently just using the wife's little tablet speaker stupid thing, whatever, that's around. Just because it's convenient. Set the volume on max. Volume on here on max. I believe it was. It may be down a bit. I, I don't remember. Now I have to go to control panel and we'll go to sounds run that up. I don't care if it's distorted out of there because it's got a lot more speakers to drive. Uh, we'll hit advanced just to see. I'll set the line in up. Um, that looks good. Speaker volume should be all the way up. It is. We can check that off just for fun. And the volume is now set. Uh, if I go to open, it's in here, doorbells. And I think it's this one. Oh man, that thing distorts like fuck. Let's uh, run that down a minute. Yeah, that's a lot better, but it's it's somewhere in here is where the volume is. So I, I don't care if it's distorted for now. Uh, now basically I have to go through the menu. Um, options, preferences, and look for the thing, and I'll show you as soon as I find it. It's global hotkeys. That's what it is, I believe. So we'll select playback. Hotkey says Control Alt Insert. We'll hit X and hit Add. Okay. Or set, rather. Or something. I don't know. Let me figure it out. Okay, now I got it. So it was right there. It was the global hotkeys. The window is the selected window right now. If I press X, the file plays just like pressing the doorbell button will actuate a relay to short the contacts in the keyboard for the X key to make the file play. Okay, now that we have that, if we click outside the window, now it's sort of grayed out if you will, and hit X, it still plays. If I minimize that and hit X, it still plays. And you'll notice that if I go to Notepad, which is one little drawback of this, but being that it's not being used for anything else, you know, if I start typing the keyboard backwards, Z, Y, 
you can't type an X, but that's okay. That's okay, because I don't need it. And actually, when I remote into it, I can type, and it won't uh, play the file in Winamp. Okay, now I have a lot of other settings in Windows. I have to turn on filter keys. I don't know if these are in any kind of order. Set the ignore keystrokes repeated faster than two seconds, because otherwise the doorbell will kind of debounce or something like that, or, or bounce or whatever you want to call it, and can ring it multiple times. That was a drawing of it. Set the repeat delay there, repeat rate as fast. That was an old thing of what it used to look like back in the day. Filter keys, I have to use the shortcut, ignore repeated keystrokes. Beep when keys pressed or accepted. I think it makes that click sound you heard earlier in the series. And uh, set the power management to, as you see, so it won't hibernate. Screensaver off. And set the automatic updates and all that crap like that. And that's it. So let me change all that. Okay, the stream is playing. I gotta do this quick so don't get flagged. Everything is good. We'll hit X. And it plays. Now the volumes will be switched around so everything works right. But now we're pretty much fully functional. So here it is at full load. We're still playing. You can see the numbers count. So it runs that in the background. That sits ready to go at a moment's notice. I have the speaker turned off, which is why you don't hear anything. And there you go. That's the wattage. That's all it uses at full fucking load, people. That's it. So, really, now it's just a matter of tweaking, shutting these programs down, reopening them, making sure they launch it, start up, and stuff like that. And once I get all of that done, we'll do a defrag, uh, clean up whatever temporary files and other stuff, which I've pretty much been doing along the way, um, get everything all set, and once I can have it automatically start up and run everything properly just by hitting the power button, it's time to shut it down, take an image of it, and essentially we are back to square one where we started. I do have another application to add to get my Gmail blangs. So I'm going to do some more setup on here and um, then we should be good couple other things I forgot. I need the um, PLS file for the shoutcast. We'll save that right to the desktop. It's called listen.pls. We'll hit save and then I need to associate that with um, VLC player and then I can put that which it should be showing up here. There it is. Associate that with VLC, which I guess I can do here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where the hell? Well, I guess if I just launch it. Select from the list. VLC. Always use. Hit OK. And now it should launch VLC and hopefully automatically start playing that. It resolved. There we go. Yep, it's working. Okay, so we don't get copyright flag. Now, printers and faxes. We have to set up the ring a ding 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 dong So the fax, as well as some network printers, have automatically uh, come up here. The fax is the one we want. We'll right click that, hit properties. And where the hell was it? Uh, I think devices, properties. Right. Uh, it, it can send if it, well, that's odd. All right. Oh, because the internal one is set. Uh, 
So I guess we have to disable that. Well, actually, no, I want the internal one set, yes. So we'll leave that, because we're, we're going to use the internal one for now. Enable device to receive, but manual answer. And hit OK. So now that's set up. And then we have to go to control panel and sounds. And sounds. And in here, look for wherever the hell it was. Fax line rings is currently set to just a plain Jane. We'll hit browse. And that's going to go desktop, ringtones. I think that's the one I chose. Yep, it works. Again, this speaker just distorts the fuck out of everything, so don't worry about that. It will not sound like that when everything's set. So now the ring a ding dingy dong is set. And pretty much everything is all set here, so I'm just going to do a final sweep. Uh, I do have to also put the USB hub with the um, flash drives on it. That's pretty much plug and play, but we'll go do that now. Okay, there is one flash drive in it. Cable is here. Plug that in somewhere back here. Hub lights up. Windows will detect. General purpose hub. I'm going to launch my computer in the meantime. Now the light's lit. USB flash drive is good. We'll go here and this should come up as drive F, which is exactly what I want it to do. So now Winamp wants a part of that. Hey, do you want me to fuck with this drive? Yes, please, please fuck with it. No problem. So we got to wait. There it is. So there's drive F. I'm not worried about that. And now I can plug in my remaining drives. USB 2.0, who needs that? Next drive I'll plug in. And uh, we'll just do these in order. There it is. Wait for that one to come up. And then after these are set, I just share that over the network. And then that's set up. So let's see if this drive will come up. Should only be a moment, really. There it is. Oh, well, that actually is not the drive I wanted for that. I'll see if I can plug them in in the right order. We'll see. G and H are in. Plug in the last one. All kinds of lights are blinking. I love that kind. I don't know what about the delayed write fail. I don't care. It came up. This drive I. Exactly what I want. We're perfect. Okay, all well, my drives are shared. I have to reboot and ensure they come up in the same order. If not, I'll have to fix that. And now the Gmail notifier, which is in this folder. And it was this one, I believe. So let me get that installed. And then disaster struck. This has been a very trying process. And it is definitely testing my patience now. Gmail Notifier Pro doesn't want to run. I don't know why. And I've uninstalled it, reinstalled it, tried the portable version, nothing. I just get this damn error. So I figured maybe it was something I just installed recently. Well, the problem is Sometimes, when you go to be cheap about things, you end up getting burned. Remember as I said before, I wanted to think about putting a different hard drive in here? Well, toward the end of my installing the applications, I was running out of disk space, so I dumped all the restore points. And that was going along fine until I did this, and I should have known there was a problem like a day ago as I was working on it, you see that Dymo label program? There's a second one that's normally installed. That was given exactly the same error. I don't know if it has to do with .NET or anything like that. That's my guess. But I can't do anything now. See, what happened was I, I tried installing this, and it didn't work. 
So I uninstalled it and then reinstalled it. Every time you do that, it creates a new system restore point. Well, now the drive is so full that I can't do a system restore. There's no temporary files. I've already deleted all of those. So I'm completely out of space on here from all those system restores and I want to restore back and it's just it's not having it so between this and the other Dymo label program something's fucked I don't know what I don't know why but pretty much at this point because this is just a project it's just something to play with it's not a big deal but it has to be working and it's not and it did work in the old load The best thing I'm going to do now is to put the Windows disk back in and start from scratch. So it's going to be a few more days until I get this thing running. But uh, I do aspire to do that. And what I'm going to do is install this program immediately after installing Windows and the service packs and all the updates. If it runs, then something else screwed it up. If it doesn't run, then it has something to do with the Windows Service Pack 4, unofficial Service Pack 4, or something like that. So anyway, it turned out to be an entire shit show, although everything was going along swimmingly. Uh, there's always going to be hiccups along the way. Uh, I'm pissed, but not terribly upset, and I can't say that I wasn't totally expecting something to go bugger up like this. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, next I will come back, hopefully, showing this system working. Sorry about all that mess. Thanks for watching. We'll get it running. I always do. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.